Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome again to another presentation of Innovation Live. I'm Mrs. Hughes with the Energy Station. The Energy Station is one of a family of career-themed maker spaces in our Chula Vista Elementary School District, located at the South Branch Chula Vista Public Library. Our focus is to teach about potential careers in the clean energy industry and educate our students about the value of renewable energy sources. Thanks to our station partners, the Chula Vista Elementary School District, the Chula Vista Public Libraries, our City of Chula Vista, sdg e NECA, and IBW, who continues to support our curriculum all year long. Well, today we're going to be going behind the scenes of density and making our own DIY or do-it-yourself lava lamp because lamps remind me of energy. Behind the scenes, Mr. Bruder and Mr. Garcia are with me to moderate the chat and take your questions. At the end, we'll have a Kahoot game to check your understanding. So let's go ahead and jump right in. So what is a lava lamp anyway? Well, back in the 1960s, there were a lot of crazy, unique and colorful toys. One British man was drawn to a liquid ache timer that was sitting on a stove and it made him think, hmm, that's really beautiful. I wonder if I can make a decoration out of it. So he collected some water, wax, and a bit of food coloring. Add heat from a light bulb and ta-da, you have a mesmerizing toy that looks great in the dark. Now it gets its name because the slow movement of bubbles actually look like lava. Now the light bulb inside actually heats and wax heats the wax bubbles, which actually rise and fall. And we call this a change in density. So let me explain. A good example of it is when you've ever been in an elevator. Um, when you're in an elevator, and with you only have maybe a few people with you, there's lots of space um, to move around. So it feels comfortable, it's not as packed, and it's very light. So let's say with just a few people, the elevator has a lighter density. But when more people join the elevator, we know it gets crowded, right? It gets packed, um, the elevator doesn't have a lot of space, it's heavier, it's tighter, and we say the elevator has a heavier density. Now, liquids act the same way. So to demonstrate, I want to show you an example of what light and heavy density and liquid form might look like. Now, as I get my materials ready here, I want you to look at this next slide and take a guess. Which liquid do you think has the heaviest density? Is it going to be vegetable oil? corn oil, excuse me, corn syrup, milk, or water. So which liquid do you think has the heaviest density? Go ahead and pick one you see on the screen there and type your guess in the chat, and I'll come back for your guesses. Again, which liquid has the heaviest density? Vegetable oil, corn syrup, milk, or water? So I'm going to go ahead and show you what these look like. Okay, so we have some samples of our four liquids we're just talking about. We have here on the left vegetable oil. I have corn syrup, which if I kind of move this around, it's very thick. It's kind of like honey. And I did put a little bit of food coloring in there so you could see the difference, but they're about the same color as vegetable oil. Then of course we have milk and water, which I did put some food coloring in so you could see it better. So let's see about your guesses. Mr. Bruder, do we happen to have anyone who maybe has a guess which they think is the heaviest or should I take the guess for them? It looks like the guesses that are coming in right now are between the corn syrup that you have and the vegetable oil. Mm, okay, so let's go ahead and try it. I'll start with corn syrup because that sounds like that was the first guess. I'm gonna move these off to the side, pretty thick. So if I think this is the most dense, that means I think I'll put that first because dense means it's packed, right? Um, let's try vegetable oil, hmm, maybe, but you know what? I'm thinking to myself, 
maybe I should try milk. For some reason, I'm thinking milk might be better. So I'm going to use this baster to very gently pour some of that in here. And actually what I'll do after I finish this is I'm going to take this little sticker off so we can see what's happening with this liquid. So let me go ahead and take this off for us. Okay, remember corn syrup is on the bottom. We're putting milk next. Oh, look at that. This is really interesting. You think it would be mixing, right, boys and girls? So I want you to be thinking, we're learning about density, things that are packed and things that are light. So right now, nothing is even mixing with the corn syrup. The milk is sitting right on the top, and I can see a pretty good thick white layer, layer on there. Okay. Hmm, I wonder what happens if I put water on it next. So let's try the water. I might get a little bit of milk mixed up in there, but that's okay. Do we think this is denser or less dense? Oh no, look at that. Okay, watch what's happening. Looks like my blue water is mixing up with blue milk. Do we have any Star Wars fans? This is like, I'm remembering blue milk from Star Wars. Okay, so hmm, I wonder what that means. So let's think about that. Density. These two are about the same, I think. So I'm only left with one more object or one more liquid, and that's vegetable oil. So let's see how vegetable oil works with our milk and water. Pour it in slowly. Oh, I see some bubbles forming at the top. And we're thinking heavier density means things sink to the bottom. Lighter density means they float to the top. Okay, from what I can tell so far, I don't see that oil really going too far down. Actually, if anything, it's, it's staying at the top. It's kind of floating. I'll do one more here. All right, boys and girls. That's pretty cool. All right, look at that. So there we have four liquids. And let's see what we have there. I, what can I tell? Well, obviously we said the heaviest is the most dense liquid. So in this group of the four things we just saw, corn syrup is gonna be the most dense. Corn syrup, syrup is sweet. Um, and like many thick sugar liquids, um, like honey, it's all gonna sink to the bottom of this glass. Um, we can also tell that milk and water are lighter densities, but they're kind of close to each other because they mix up, right? We have blue milk now. And finally, the oil is going to be the lightest or the least dense of the group. And that makes sense because I've seen bottles of salad dressing um, that contain oil and water or oil and other liquids, and they don't seem to mix very well. In fact, the oil is separating, like you see, and it rises to the top. So less dense liquids float to the top and have more room to spread, and denser ones are going to sink to the bottom. Okay, let's take a look at some other interesting facts about density. So that was pretty cool. And if you want to see even more examples of density, just look up some videos about density columns. That's what we call these. And you'll be able to find lots of really neat experiments that you can try with your family. Now, again, of the four liquids we use, one of them is considered a biofuel. Now, a biofuel is a fuel created from plant material that can be used for energy, like in cars. Biofuels are made from biomass, and biomass is the leftover plant material from farming, um, forestry, or even grown specifically for that use. So which one of those four do you think was a biofuel? Now, if you guess the vegetable oil, you're actually right. And yes, corn syrup does have corn, but the oil is much more of a biofuel. So to learn more about biomass and how it can be turned into fuels, let's watch this video that explains a little bit more. We all 
all know that it takes a lot of fuel to keep our country running, right? Cars, trucks, planes, trains. What if we could develop a homegrown, renewable source for those fuels? Well, good news. We already are. We can create clean, renewable transportation fuels from plants, trees, and a range of other organic materials. In other words, biomass. Okay, so biomass is organic material from forest thinnings and wastes, from crops grown to produce energy, and from other renewable energy sources like algae that can all be converted into fuels. Scientists and engineers are finding new ways to make biofuels that can take the place of conventional fuels, like gasoline, diesel, and jet fuel. Here's where biofuels have a great advantage. They can be made from leftovers or waste products. For example, non-edible biomass sources like wheat straw and corn cobs are often left over from agricultural production, and some can actually be used to create fuel. And in the near future, crops can be grown specifically for energy, like fast-growing trees and grasses. Right now, biorefineries with new technologies are being built to convert biomass into fuel, power, and even bioproducts, like plastics, soaps, and cosmetics. And many biofuels can be seamlessly integrated into existing vehicles and fueling systems for diesel, gasoline, and even jet engines. So, how does it work? Essentially, biomass solids are broken down and then refined into biofuels. There are a lot of ways to do this. The end result is fuel you can use anywhere or any way that you would use petroleum-based fuel. Homegrown biofuels clean and renewable, and a big step forward for America's energy security. Okay, so you heard that corn is a huge biomass crop, and biomass plant technicians are in charge of monitoring and operating machinery to produce that renewable energy. They also inspect the equipment by testing its chemistry and perform repairs. And like them, we are going to be monitoring our lava lamps production today because we're going to be using a biofuel, corn oil. Now, here's a question I have for you. What is something you think a car could be powered by in the future? Use your imagination, tell us your ideas, and we'll share them out a little bit. Again, what is something you think a car could be powered by in the future? So, we're gonna start our engineering design process. We know this, we're very familiar with this by now. And I first identified my problem, which is I'd like to make a lava lamp. I think my challenge is going to be applying the knowledge I learned from the density um, experiment we did from our last demo to this EDP, EDP process. So our first step is to ask, as I think like a biomass plant technician, I might ask some questions like, um, which liquid densities have the best match? I mean, you can tell the milk and the water didn't really um, have any separation. They're about the same. Uh, can I heat it up like a real lava lamp? I don't know. Uh, what can I put inside my lava lamp to make it even more fun to watch? Now, I imagine there are several containers that could work out for my lava lamp. So I might do some research to guide me. You see some examples that might be there. But from my research and planning, I now think I know how I want to replicate my lava lamp. So as I review the materials, remember you can pause this video anytime and catch up when you're ready, just in case you don't have something handy. So let's go ahead and plan. To make our lava lamp, here are the things you're going to need. On our must-have list, we first have water bottles with caps. Again, think about your containers. You can certainly do this with a jar or a glass. But if you want to keep it, it's probably nice to have them in a bottle with a cap on it. You're going to need some vegetable oil or corn oil. 
you're going to need a measuring cup or a funnel. Now, I know this might be hard to find, but that's only because we want to pour things into the small spout of a bottle. So if you have something that can get the liquids inside without spilling, that would be great. Food coloring is nice. Salt and access to water. Now, you could use some of the water from the water bottle. Maybe just drink some of that, about half of that bottle. But if you have access to a faucet, that would be even better. Now, in our mayhaps, glitter. I know some of you are thinking, oh, I'll put some glitter in my lava lamp. And then we're actually going to do two lava lamps today. At least I am going to show you two, and then you can decide if you want to do these mayhaps later. So to do a mayhab bottle, you're going to need baking soda, vinegar, and maybe a spoon to do a little bit of mixing. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and hop over to my dot cam again, and we're going to start creating. Okay, so let's go ahead and get this ready. I'm going to first start with my salt lava lamp and you can see I've already labeled this one. So I know the difference when I do my two different bottles. And you don't have to do this, but I'm going to actually mark my bottle because I want to put them um, divide up into fractions and I know we've been doing fractions, right? So boys and girls, you should know your basic fractions. This is our whole. I'm going to cut this up into fourths. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to mark off a half of the bottle about right, right about here. And I'm going to mark one half. OK, but since I'm doing this in fourths, let's go ahead and break them up into two more pieces. So I'll say about here. And about here, it's a little bit off, but that's not too bad. Let's pretend that my hole stops around there. So this is going to be my one fourth. Let's see one fourth. And what's the same as one fourth, or what's the same as one half? It's going to be two fourths. What's the next one? Three fourths. I know it's not, I'm not perfectly uh, equally the same. One might be a little slightly bigger than the other, but I'm close. And this is our last one, fourth fourths or one whole. All right, so there, now you know why you learned all that math this year, right? Okay, so about one fourth of the bottle, two fourths or half of it, three fourths and four fourths. Okay, I have my ingredients ready to go. So for my salt lava lamp, the first thing I'm going to be doing is I'm going to put um, my water back in the bottle. Now, if you just drink a water bottle, maybe just drink about half of it. But I'm going to use a funnel so I don't spill all over my table here. And I have my measuring cup. And I'm going to gently pour a half bottle of water back in here. All right, almost there. Okay. All right. Okay, a little bit more. All right, very good. Okay, we'll put that water, extra water aside. I want to add some food coloring, so I'm going to pick some red because it's lava. I'm just going to put a couple drops of lava red in there. Maybe swirl it up. Okay. Done with that. And next I'm going to add the oil. So I just have some, is this say vegetable oil? And vegetable oil is more or less the same as corn oil. Um, if you go to the store with your families, you know there's other types of oils, right? There's things like canola oil, which is made from plants. Um, there's olive oil. This is just a simple oil that's, that's fairly cheap, okay? I want to put one fourth. So if I look at my fourths, how far my lines do I have to go? just up to the three. That's another fourth. So I'm going to very gently pour one fourth oil in here, just like we did with our density column. So keep pouring, keep pouring all the way to get to the three. And it looks like it's about right. Maybe a little bit more. Oh, wow. You can already tell how it's separating, right? Remember oil and water, they don't mix. All right, put this aside there. Okay, now the next thing is I'm making a salt lamp to start. 
So we want to see what can we do with salt. Now this one, again, if you don't have a funnel, you might have to pour very carefully. Uh, mine has a nice spout here, but I'm going to pour just a little bit at a time, and I want you to observe and watch what's going to happen or if anything's going to happen with these uh, objects in the, the oil and water. So I'm going to go and pour in a little bit at a time. Whoa. I saw some of that stuff come right back up. It's like the bubbles went right back up. Let's pour a little bit more. Okay, so I noticed some of the bubbles are rising. It's like the salt fell to the bottom. And I think what's happening is it's very, very slow, but I'm noticing the bubbles are kind of rising from the top. Do one more. Okay, I'm going to set this one aside. We'll have to see if there's any other reactions over time that are happening with that salt lamp. Okay, so that's our salt lamp. If you have your ingredients for that one, you can set it aside. Now, as I said, we're gonna. I'm going to make two. So if you have baking soda and vinegar, again, I would caution and make sure that you guys um, maybe have an adult or at least do this in your kitchen because those of you who maybe used baking soda and vinegar before, I think already know what's going to happen. I'm going to move my salt out of the way get my second bottle. All right, and I already marked off this one just for time. So you see it says baking soda and vinegar lava lamp. Actually, I'm actually put my cap on this guy so it doesn't spill. Okay, all right, I'm gonna go back to my funnel. This time I'm gonna put in the baking soda first. Now I have baking soda, it's a white powder um, used for baking, of course, and I'm putting it about anywhere between two to four tablespoons. Okay, so I'm just gonna kind of dump that in there carefully. And I'm putting this in my bottle first. Okay, I'm gonna shake the rest of it in there in my funnel. Okay, it looks good. I'm gonna go back to my oil. Now, this is where, again, boys and girls, if you have oil and hopefully you have plenty of it, you know, always ask your family for permission borrowing some of these cooking ingredients. We're gonna wonder, where'd all the oil go? This one, we're gonna, we're gonna use a lot. We're gonna be using about a half of the bottle. So again, it's two fourths. So I'm gonna pour my oil all the way to the number two. Okay, I'm gonna go slow. All right, I don't want to go too fast with this. You can kind of see some things happening already. I see the there's maybe a clump of baking soda at the bottom that doesn't seem to be um, too affected. I wonder if that's going to stay like that the whole time. All right, there we go, two fourths or one half. Okay, I'll put that aside. Okay, now the next thing I'm going to do, I have vinegar. This was not one of our four in our uh, density column. Vinegar, as you know, it's clear. And if you've made uh, Easter eggs maybe a month or so ago, um, you know how it smells, right? So again, you don't need a whole lot for this one, but I'm actually going to color my vinegar um, before I put it in. So since we're the energy station, I'm choosing green. Put a couple drops of green in there. And we'll mix that up. And I'm gonna pour this into my funnel very slowly. Now you're ready? We wanna keep your eyes on this one, boys and girls. Let's see if this does anything different from our salt lamp. Remember, there's our salt lamp in the background. Okay, here we go. Whoa, I see a lot more bubbles happening over here. A lot more bubbles. Oh my goodness. Okay, let's keep pouring. Again, this is about two tablespoons of vinegar with food coloring. All right, that's all of it. Oh, wow. Look at that reaction. Okay, so here's a question for you, you and you can throw your, your guesses in the chat. If you're, if you're not making this with me, if your hands are dry, 
Why do you think these two acted differently? Why did they react differently? So write some guesses in the chat for me. I would love to hear them a little bit later, right before our Kahoot. We have our salt lamp and our baking soda and vinegar lamp, and they definitely are acting very differently. Wow, that's pretty cool. Kind of mesmerizing, isn't it? I'll make sure I put that cap back on there. Again, why do you think they reacted differently? Okay. So we made it. We made a lava lamp, and I hope you guys enjoyed making one or both of these. Um, so our next step is to think of improving our design. What would you do to improve your design? I'll leave that up to you. Think of all the parts that we went that went into making ours today and all the different ingredients. And perhaps you can share some of your ideas um, for making your lava lamp a little bit better. All right, it's time for our Kahoot. I know you're probably still cleaning up or building, but if you wanna play, this is what you're gonna need to do. Open up another window, not a tab, so you can see my questions in one and your answer buttons on the other. And there's our pin number, 101021. And as we're waiting for our friends to join us, Mr. Bruder, do we have any suggestions for how to improve their lava lamp designs or guesses as to why these two bottles reacted differently? Hey, Mrs. Hughes. Yeah, we have some of those coming in, but I was wondering if I could share with you what people thought a car could be powered by in the future. We have oh, a lot. Oh, yes, of course. What are some guesses for that? Uh, Savannah had shared that, and, and Joshua as well, a solar-powered car. Yep. We have uh, lots of sun in California. That makes a lot of sense to me. I actually have heard of a couple prototypes, um, some different colleges in our state that um, who are very STEAM oriented. And that's some of the things that these students get to do is they get to kind of design what could a solar powered car look like. I love it. Very cool. Uh, Ryan also suggested trash. Oh yeah, I love that. You know, it's funny because I, I was gonna put a picture in there and um, I wasn't sure if many of you would know, but you know me, I love movies and I had a Back to the Future picture. And if you've watched that movie, you know, Doc Brown, he comes back to 1985 and he has this new DeLorean and it gets to be powered by trash. And I thought, wow, that's so cool. Wouldn't that be great if we could have the same thing? So I love your idea. Gael and Aaron also shared the uh, powering cars with water. Okay. Uh, yeah, water, yeah. And actually, um, yeah, and water makes sense. There's some. There's a car out there, which I don't think many students are familiar with called hydrogen cars. And actually when the byproduct of that is actually um, it releases water when you're using this chemical or this element called hydrogen. So that'd be really cool. Natalia also shared perhaps a car could be powered by coconut oil. Ooh, that's a new one. It would smell good. <laughs> that's what I was thinking. <laughs> uh, Jordan also shared that perhaps cars could be powered by rocks. Okay. Or corn syrup, as you were talking about earlier. Okay. And then we had we had a few things come in as far as what your question about why do you think they reacted differently? Can I share those as well? Absolutely. So Jaden and, and a few other students shared because of the different liquids that you use or the different ingredients. Uh, Avani shared that the the vinegar rea reacted with the baking soda. Um, Caitlin as well, and Leonardo noticed that. The, um, one bubbled up quite a bit, your second one, and the first one did not, not so much. Yeah, and, and there's some big differences there. So I would challenge you boys and girls to think of what are some real applications or real examples you've seen in the world that might be similar to our lamp. Like I start thinking as you were talking, Mr. Bruder, that gosh, you know, if I go to the beach, I know that there's salt in our water and I don't see bubbles coming out like we did with the baking soda. That'd be kind of weird, but I know there's salt in the ocean so maybe, you know, that's why it didn't move so much. And then I start thinking, gosh, I've done like volcano experiments before with students. And I realized, yeah, the baking soda and vinegar. If you've ever done a volcano, that's how you make it explode. Um, so I totally agree with those viewers that, yeah, the baking soda and vinegar do have a reaction. And as a matter of fact, the bubbles, here's a little fun fact, boys and girls, the bubbles you see releasing from that vinegar, it's carbon dioxide. 
And so that's what we breathe out, right? So there's a reaction, a chemical reaction that's happening in that bottle right there between baking soda and the vinegar. It releases a lot of those gases. All right, good observations. With that, I think we're ready to jump into the Kahoot game. Fantastic. Okay, let's do it. Okay, so I'm going to hop over to that. Oops. Make sure I get to my game correctly. And we'll click on our start button. There we go. Okay, DIY lava lamp. Let's go. See what you guys remember. Okay, first question. A real lava lamp is made with, this is a real one, is it made out of lava? Red triangle? Is it made from volcanoes? Blue diamond? Is it made out of bubbles? Yellow circle? Or is it made with wax? Green square? So a real lava lamp, if you've ever seen one, that's what they look like. And yes, they do move that slow. Is it going to be lava, red triangle, volcanoes, blue diamond, bubbles, yellow circle, or made with wax, green square? Get your answers in. Looks like we have a lot of players this morning, this afternoon here, before we get to 42, 43. Got 10 more seconds, boys and girls. I would be cool if a... Uh, it made, we were made of all of these materials, but it's only going to be one. Okay, of course, it's going to be made with wax. I don't think it would last if it was made with real lava. So good job, those of you who picked green. Let's see who's in front. Awesome chicken. I don't think we've had awesome chicken before. <laughs> Love these names. Okay, number two. Which liquid from our demo had the heaviest density, remember dense, heaviest density, was it vegetable oil, red triangle, was it the corn syrup, blue diamond, was it water, yellow circle, or was it the milk, green square? So if you saw in the beginning of our presentation, we did our density column, we had these four liquids and we separated them out. One of them was the heaviest. One was the heaviest that actually sank to the bottom of the glass. Was it vegetable oil, red triangle? Was it corn syrup, blue diamond? Was it the water, yellow circle, or the milk, green square? About five more seconds for your answers. Looks like most of them came in already. Let's see what we got. Okay, very good. You guys remember corn syrup. So the sugary liquid, that's gonna be heavier. As a matter of fact, the milk and water, remember they mixed up together. So they must have similar densities. Okay, giving elephant now has taken over. All right, number three. So going along with density, if objects are dense, what are they? They are oily, red triangle. If objects are dense, they are bubbly, blue diamond. If objects are dense, they are tight, yellow circle. Or if objects are dense, they are loose, green square. So think of what we saw between our experiment with the salt lava lamp and our baking soda and vinegar lava lamp. If objects are dense, are they oily? Are they bubbly? Are they tight? Or are they loose density? You can even think back to how the vegetable oil reacted. How did the corn syrup react when they were um, all in the same glass? What did we notice there? Okay, good. So that was a close one. Yes, tight, the same as packed. When they're dense, they're packed together. Very good. All right, let's see who's in the lead. Oh, giving elephant, you're awesome. Fast fingers there. Okay, next question. Fourth question. This is about biomass. We learned from the video what biomass was. Biomass can be made from what? 
Can it be made from plants? Red triangle. Is biomass made from water? Blue diamond. Is biomass made from milk? Yellow circle or the sun? Green square. I feel like this question, Mr. Bruder, is a giveaway because they're looking at this picture. So now it's just a matter of who is the fastest with their fingers. Think about boys and girls, biomass. What can it be made out of? Plants, water, milk, or the sun. Now I know one for sure that there's actually a renewable energy in one of those answers. We know biomass is a renewable energy, but the sun is also one too. So I'm not sure if that would be the best guess, but I think our viewers already know the answer to this. Okay, I would be a little worried if you guys didn't get this. So yes, plants would be right. Most obvious choice. Excellent job, you guys. Whoa, flying crab is flying to the top. Good job, you guys. All right, our last question, final question for our round. Biomass, again, it can help the earth because what? What can it do? Biomass can help the earth because it's renewable, red triangle, it can replace gas, blue diamond, plastics can be made from plants, yellow circle, or all of the above green square. So think of the, the benefits of biomass that we learned from the video. It's renewable, red triangle. It can replace gasoline for cars, blue diamond. Uh, plastics can be made from plants, which we don't know biomass is a plant material. Is it yellow circle or is it green square all, all three of those choices, all of the above. All right, get your final answers in. You can see it hit our 50 mark. Oh, good. You have to 52 answers. All right. Okay, it was close. I'm so glad you guys know it's renewable. So we had 20 of you say for sure it's renewable, but actually all three of those choices make sense. So really good work, you guys. I'd say everyone got that one right. Okay, on our podium today, we have Awesome New. Good job, Awesome New. Number two, Flying Crab. They stayed in the lead there for a bit, but number one, I have a feeling it's a new name. Who could it be? Charming Koala. Okay. All right, Charming Koala. Good job. All right. Thank you, boys and girls. Excellent work. And to wrap up our day today, um, if you're interested in more fun innovation activities, as you know, you can check out our YouTube channel, CVESD Innovation Instruction. Um, our moderators are going to put those links in the chat for you. Adults and teachers, if you're also watching, you can tag and follow us on our social media. We would love to see some of the great uh, lava lamps that um, students in your class at their homes are creating today. But we're coming down to the last weeks of school and what a fun activity we have the next week for you just in time for summer. Um, join our hydro station teacher, Miss Bystrack, for building a model paddle boat. Yeah, you see a picture of it there. That's going to be next Friday, May 28th at 12 o'clock right here in Teams. So be sure to get all the information from your teachers and join her as we end the month of May. Well, I really enjoyed being with you guys. Thanks for watching everyone and we'll see you next time. Bye.